today on the Self Smarter Podcast. Really, these two episodes are about elevating our acceptance of our total selves and living more wholly in awareness around mm-hmm. ar- around what can trip us up as well as what can accelerate us. Hi, we're Danelle and Megan, the hosts of this conversation-centric podcast for leaders seeking to be better every day. Whether you choose to be a leader in the workplace, at home, or in your community, we believe the most effective leaders are equipped to not only be self-starters, but self-smarter. Hello, and welcome to Self Smarter. I'm Megan, and this is my friend and co-host, Danelle. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If you're here, more than likely, you've listened to part one of our Enneagram Blind Spot series. Today, we're in part two. So if you've just plopped in and you haven't listened to part one, which is episode 32, maybe you might want to pause, just a pro (laughs) tip, and go back and listen to episode 32 and then come right back to this episode because today, in our last episode, we talked about blind spots Mm -hmm. and bright spots relative to the Enneagram. And then today we're going to talk about living in healthy integration of those, meaning how do I make what you said last week, Danelle, come to fruition for me in my life? Absolutely. Based on my Enneagram type. So that's what we're here to do today. Before we get started, Mm -hmm. I just want to actually, I'd like for you to share it because we ended last week's episode and we were like, (laughs) I was like, wow, we really went off on a Brandy Carlisle tangent, which we love to do. Yeah. I'm not apologizing for it. (laughs) But but we often get like, why? Like, what's the deal? So can you explain to our listeners why we, you know what, why the passion? We do. We get the question a lot and and we're extra. And then we just saw our two nights in a row and the beautiful Red Rocks. We're going to have a whole episode on that for Brandy fans or for those that are curious. Here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to try to convince people about Brandy Carlisle. So those of you who listen to her music, the question's answered. Those... Those of you that are curious, mm-hmm. I'd invite you to do one of two things. Mm-hmm. I or three things. You can either listen to the book Broken Horses, which is to Highly me recommend. one of the best memoirs I've ever, and I would recommend listening to it because there's just specialness Her that voice. happens there. She sings in the book, and then also uh, or go see her live. She's mm-hmm. still on tour, and she's got a lot of shows left in this particular tour. Or just listen to you know, any of her albums. And so I, I just don't feel like we have to explain why. And I know a lot of people are curious because it is something that is very, talk fr- about a, lot. a lot, but if you, you know, if, if, if that question marks there for you and you trust us as music advocates <laughs> or music enthusiasts, yes. go listen to some of her music and it speaks for itself. And then please, if you do let us know, but yeah, I'm, I, we can't help it because it's been, you know, she's been such a, a guiding light and to know that she had, you know, this, she's had this pretty lengthy career and to just now be coming into mainstream and being available to many more people. I just think it's magical. Can I tell you something mm-hmm. that we haven't talked about? What I realized in Colorado that she is self smarter and that yes. is partially why I'm drawn to her Yes, because she's living in this authentic Yes. And this art that she's producing is like touching all these people mm-hmm. emotionally mm-hmm. And it's like not always like fun to go down some of those paths emotionally, at least for relative to her lyrics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's hurtful sometimes, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or it brings up things. Yeah. I don't know that it's hurtful, but it's, but I know what you're saying. But when you lean in, it's self smarter. Yes, absolutely. And so I realized that in Colorado, I can't believe it took me all this time to figure that out. But Mm -hmm. so that is why listeners, Mm -hmm. that is it. (laughs) That's it. Because she is living, I think the way that authentically that I think Danelle and I are trying to work towards as well. Absolutely. I think it's so, um, thank you for that aside about Brandy Carlisle. Danelle was not prepared for that. (laughs) So at all, but I can talk about it anytime. I know. I know. Thank (laughs) you. But really what I wanted to talk about for fun today was Mm. there's this particular story, which, oh my God, I could bounce all around here, but you celebrity lookalikes. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So most people have, like some people have one. You recently went to a music food and wine, something or other. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I knew that you were there Mm -hmm. and having fun. And you sent me this picture. You were there with a group of friends Mm -hmm. and you sent me this photo of this group of people. And one of the people (laughs) looked exactly like Halle Berry. And I think that's why you sent me the photo. It was just kind of like out of the blue, like here it is. And I was like, Oh my God, that woman looks just like Halle Berry. 
Or that is Halle Berry. Or you're with Halle Berry, <laughs> and that's cool. That's neato. Um, but you, which brought me to the thought of this story that I love about you. Oh. <laughs> you tell the story. <laughs> Please tell everybody the story about your celebrity lookalike. It, oh, okay. All right. So I have been told for years, years and years and years, that I... I resemble Melissa Etheridge. Mm. And personally, I don't always see it, but I certainly know our voices can tend to, except when I'm, if I could sing like that, I wouldn't be here on this podcast. Um, that's Boo, really, or you might. <laughs> or I might be. But uh, yeah, so I've been told to look like Melissa Etheridge. And so I was, I, was at a, um, I was at a bar with a friend and we walked in and I'm telling you, listeners, this was at noon. <laughs> Here. So we were there to, here in Dallas, here in Dallas yeah. and I was, we were there to get lunch, but our table wasn't ready. So we were going to grab a glass of wine and my friend is away and I walk up to the bar and I go to get a drink or order us two glasses of wine. And there's this lady next to me and I can see her out of my peripheral, like, and I can feel the staring, like it's getting heavier and heavier she's and I'm not looking away. No. And she's been there for a minute Yeah, oh. and there's, she's eating and the bartender is literally trying to keep me from her her because he could see it happening too he could see it more than I could but she is just staring at me and and so finally she turns to her friend in a very loud voice goes oh my gosh it's Melissa Etheridge okay so I look around to see where is Melissa Etheridge she's She's here is what I'm thinking but then I realized then they're all, I, when I turn back to, towards them, I realize they're all looking at me. They're like, oh no, 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 no. So her friend grabs her shoulder and goes, that's not Melissa Etheridge. And she's like, yes, it is. And so she turns to me and she's like, Melissa, I'm such a big fan. Meanwhile, the bartender like, is oh, trying no. to intercept because yeah. he's like, she's been after it for a while. Anyway, I just did not want to burst this woman's bubble. So I just played along. I love it. I was like, oh, it's good to see you. It's nice to meet you. And then uh, the, she, I don't remember all the details, but she just continues to ask me questions and engage with me as if I'm Melissa Etheridge. Now I'm just having fun. And so my friend's like looking back going, what are you doing? And so finally the lady puts her hand, I get my two glasses of wine and the lady puts her hand on my shoulder and she looks me dead in the eye and she goes, I'm so glad in this, you know, little tipsy voice that you didn't die and your hair's grown back so beautifully because this was after, this is after Melissa had battled cancer. So. I mean, I'm looking at the bartender, the bartender's looking at me and I just shrug Thanks. my shoulders and I just walked away and let her have her go on believing, just go on believing that she was hanging out with Melissa. And I, I said, I appreciate the well wishes and wish you, wish you too well and hope you're driving in a cab home. <laughs> <laughs> hope you're being safe about it, ladies. <laughs> yes. But I bet. Yeah. So that was probably one of my craziest celebrity okay, well, look-alike the day moments. That I'm going to look forward to <laughs> in our future, not to, to. Yes, absolutely. To combine two stories <laughs> is the day when someone mistakenly thinks that you're Brandy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Won't that be a, cool? The, we'll have well, to change the hairdo, but she's gone blonde. So yeah, we'll, it might happen. We'll see. All right. Let's That'll get into blind spots right after this commercial. Okay. So you've heard us talk about the work we do at DMA. Let me tell you something. One of the best products our team can build for a business is a custom messaging guide. This high-level document spells out the story of your business so it's easy for your customers to grasp and ignites curiosity in their minds about how your products and services can truly make a difference in their business. The best part of all, we do them for a flat fee. They've become one of our best-selling products in 2022, and we'd love to get one in the works for your business. Send an email to info at dma-solutions.com and we'll set up a call to get your messaging guide in the works. Okay, Danielle, in our last episode, 32, which mm-hmm. was part one, we talked about the reality of our blind spots and our bright spots and yep. that we all have them. They're beautiful. Yeah, they, they are. They are what they are. Mm-hmm. And sometimes unintentional blind spots equals unintentional bright spots equals intentional I would say. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well said. So then today we're going to take this lesson one step further to talk about what success looks like and how your life can look when you're living in an awareness of Mm -hmm. the blind and the bright Mm -hmm. and actually behaving in that way. And so we're going to take it 
type by type, just like we did last time mm-hmm. and talk about the benefits of those things. Yeah. So you and I had a little bit of a revelation mm-hmm. after the last episode. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. In essence, what we're realizing, again, we've been studying this, the Enneagram in particular, for a long time. And I think some people see us as being, I mean, we're about to be guest speakers on this particular subject at a, at a conference. Right. So yes, we do know a lot about the Enneagram and how it works, but what we're also learning, it, me in particular in this season of life, is no matter how much we know about ourselves in any given moment, there's always something new to learn because mm-hmm. life continues to happen. Mm-hmm. And seasons continue to evolve and change and sometimes life throws us big hugs and sometimes it throws us big curveballs. And so, you know, when we were decided to do the episode on blind spots, we were just going to do one episode, but there was such a richness that we got out of it that we wanted to extend it to a two part series for our listeners as well, because just going through the numbers and even us spending some time on the seven, which I'm a seven on the Enneagram and you're a nine you know, for me, I could really see how us diving back into the Enneagram in an even deeper fashion, which has been quite honestly encouraged through my therapy, Mm -hmm. is that, wait a minute, there's still a lot to learn here. And for sevens, we like to, (laughs) we like to focus on the shiny, bright things. Right. And so sometimes the blind spots are the things that we can just naturally have a tendency to want to ignore. And so, putting ourselves in a vulnerable position to a study that for ourselves. I mean, certainly for me, I'm doing it in a number of ways. We're, we're doing it here for the podcast, but I'm also doing it through therapy. I mean, I see the impact and it's changing, it's changing my life at this, in this season. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm so grateful to share that with our listeners. And so really these two episodes are about elevating our acceptance of our total selves and living more holy and awareness around mm-hmm. ar- around what can trip us up as well as what can accelerate us. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, that's what's really resonated for us since, you know, since we decided to do this, what was to be one episode that turned into two. That's so right. we're excited about that. Right. And it's really that gift of imperfection yes. that everyone is receiving mm-hmm. and hopefully understanding and taking away from these, these episodes. So let's keep going together and talk about that healthy integration of our blind spots, Danelle. All right. So like I said, we are, we are talking about blind spots as it relates to the Enneagram. And if you've listened to our previous episodes, when we talk about the Enneagram, when you're looking at the diagram, which is resembles a clock, we start with the nine. So okay. kicking off with our peacemakers, which Megan happens to be, mm-hmm. is uh, healthy nines excel at understanding different points of view, but also clearly express their own. And they're able to establish healthy boundaries by saying no and assert their own agenda, even if it means risking conflict. Mm-hmm. And they're also able to develop an ability to act on their own behalf and engage in conflict while tolerating the discomfort that it could potentially entail. Yes. And talk to me about that. Like, yeah. do, are these true for you? They are. And and this is like an extension of the blind or the bright spots that you talked about in the last episode. So if I'm living in an awareness, in a, in a state of awareness, and quite frankly, agility, mm-hmm. which you yes. talk about, uh-huh. and I'm in the moment, and I'm like, oh boy, I feel a conflict, which is my our Achilles heel, mm-hmm. is conflict. I am able to say, oh, wait a minute, I can turn this around into a fruitful conversation that doesn't have to be com- a, a conflict at, at all. all. And in fact, I'm eager to have it. Mm-hmm. Like That's the integration. Yep. The integration of blind spot plus bright spot equals this outcome. Mm -hmm. And so the outcome is quite frankly, for me, we're, we're peacemakers, but we also are peacekeepers. Yes. And that that's what we crave Mm -hmm. just like sort of this level set. Mm -hmm. And so that is what you're able to achieve when you integrate into that mindset. Right. And I think that's key as we continue to go through all the numbers is that in this particular episode, we're going to use words like awareness and integration interchangeably. Yes. So please take note of that as, as we continue to dive in. All right, moving on to type one, the reformer. 
Healthy ones are more relaxed and flexible, and they display humor and lightness, which, in other words, they go to their seven, as they do in growth. (laughs) They often make time for fun and are more accepting of their feelings and needs, and they're less judgmental of others and accept and channel their own anger consciously. Because in episode 32, we talked about anger repression with this particular type. I mean, anger is the repression of that is kind of where the perfectionism sets in right and or it can stem from it can go either way but uh, this is you know as we've said ones can be so judgmental of themselves yes. first and foremost far beyond anyone else right. but through their frustration they can tend to you know struggle with that so in health and fully integration they're finding ways to be less judgmental and that's being more honest about what they're feeling in the moment and you know, watching two, we have two very, uh, you know, specific ones on our, we actually have three ones, uh, type ones on our team and watching uh, in particular, Marcy and Jordan who are kind of approach things differently, Mm -hmm. but are both ones. They, um, watching them in health, it's, it's very clear as to what they're trying to do to avoid, you know, their blind spots. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's good to see them, you know, exercising that as it is all of us around here, but you know, and again, being in awareness. Yeah. Marcy and I have a particularly close relationship just because we've worked, Mm -hmm. I've worked with her for the last 15 years as I have with you. Yep. And so I, I would guesstimate that because we're each other's wings, Uh I'm going in a different direction now, but just stick with me. Mm -hmm. We can both see each other's blind spots probably like right on the surface. Oh, for sure. Like she sees mine and calls them out and Uh I see hers and call them out to the point where she probably gets pissed Mm -hmm. and I get pissed, Mm -hmm. but it's the truth. Yeah. You know? And so, and because I know it, Mm -hmm. I'm a wing one. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Right. And And she's a wing nine. So she gets it. Sure. We understand each other too well. And you do too. Well, I understand the one because sevens go to one in stress. Yeah. So the blind spots, we take on the blind spots of the one when we're, when we're not in a good spot. So uh, yeah, I I can, that's why, again, I can identify or empathize certainly with that. Yeah. So it's just an interesting, you know, for, for leaders who are listening to this and thinking about their own relationships, Mm -hmm. whether at home or at work, think about that in relation to others, how, you know, you're working closely, what number are they, what type are they, and Mm -hmm. how does that integrate with you? Absolutely. Are they a wing? Are you in growth? Are you in stress? Mm -hmm. How does that affect your relationship? Yep. Moving on to type twos, our helpers. All right. Healthy twos are generous without expectation of receiving anything in return. And we know this is when they are recognizing and acting on their own needs versus what they think will make people happy. Mm -hmm. This looks like people that are able to blend warmth and friendliness with the ability to be direct and assertive, Mm -hmm. asking for help when it's really needed and balancing giving and receiving as well with confidence and humility. So that's an action packed. Yes. Two sentences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a, lot, lot. a lot there. There's a lot there. Mm-hmm. And really it's, it's what I heard you say was no strings attached. Yep. So if there are twos listening, or if you know a two that you love in your life, just help them see that. Listen, or were there strings attached to that? Or were, is this, is this no strings attached? Mm-hmm. And then they'll come into awareness. That's integration. Yes. And then really because of the type two is such a helper, this may be shocking to them and not feel good because they don't ever want you to think any less of them. They Mm -hmm. just want to be loved. Mm -hmm. So calling this out to a two, a two is going to have to come to this awareness kind of on their own, but you can always say, are there any strings attached? What do you mean? Well, you know, and then get into it a little bit deeper, but just helping them come into full awareness of this challenging aspect of themselves. Also being honest about what is good and what is not good, everything, they want everything to be good. Yes. Which is why they hide that manipulate. It's almost, well, it is, it's unconscious manipulation. Mm -hmm. So putting them in a seat to feel comfortable Mm -hmm. with offering help with no strings and offering opinions and boundaries, that's free. That's okay. Right. Like it's okay to do that. Precisely. Yeah. Permission. Mm -hmm. Permission. Yeah. Perfect. Permission. Yeah. All All right. right. Let's talk about three. Okay. Type three, the achiever. So healthy things bring more heart and emotion into their work versus doing what was asked or just doing enough to check that box off their list. Mm. Again, they're achiever for the reason they're trying to get things done 
And in health, threes place a higher priority on building more connected relationships and have more of the ability to slow down and truly feel their feelings versus almost robot through the day. That's right. Uh, suddenly they find that they are able to balance their desire for productivity with personal creativity. And one of the more difficult things I think for a three in health is to truly be transparent with their failures. Um, like, like really own it. Yeah, like, like, and, and failures, it, it, it could be a mistake or it can be a project that they just didn't meet standards or whatever it may be, just being able to own that. And it's just interesting, the dynamic between type ones and type threes, they both suffer from a version of perfectionism. perfectionism. So when they're able to let that go and say, it's okay, like that didn't turn out as exactly how it should have, or maybe, you know, it, it did quote unquote fell. That's okay. What, what's the lesson to be learned here? And that's when a three is truly leaning into their awareness. Right. Because all like the importance of that checkbox mm -hmm. next to their, especially as it relates to work and all the things they think they're supposed to do in order to achieve, mm -hmm. that is the key. That's what's critical for them. So if you are okay with it mm -hmm. and can learn to sort of give them again with the permission, mm -hmm. permission to just be in, sit in that failure mm -hmm. or that disappointment or yeah. whatever it is that they think they're failing at, then that is the key to three health, integration of three health. Yeah. If you know a three, they're probably highly driven individuals and they probably don't talk a lot about their feelings. We talked about that in part two. Mm -hmm. So now if you know a three and you're looking for positives, they're talking about their feelings and they're accepting failures. Yep. Yep. Well said. All right. Type four, the individualist. Healthy fours are able to express their feelings without getting overly caught up in them. I think that they tend to get tangled up in emotions uh, versus tangible issues. Yep. So in health, they can be both, they can both experience deep emotion and rise above them or better yet, let them go. And I think that's the real, the real sign of an integrated four is yeah. being able to own the emotion, which is what they're really good at, yeah. but to not just sit with it, right. to allow it to, to, to move, move through, on. move on. Yeah. And these people can be very hard on themselves. So when they're in a healthy integration of their blind spots, they know their value and worth without reference to others because they can tend to suffer a bit from comparisons and that's where they can get tripped up. So in health, they find a way to balance their need to express themselves and instead become great listeners of others. So I think it's just an interesting, we're so intrigued with type four around here because we don't really currently don't have any on our, on our, on our team, but uh, find it to be a very interesting number to study. Yeah. I think a four in this integrated health mm -hmm way that you just described sounds like an awesome friend to have. I think so. Definitely for those of us who struggle with dealing with their emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need some more four friends. Mm -hmm. Note. Help us tap into, yeah. yes. tap into emotions. Yes. Exactly. All right. Type five, our investigators. Healthy fives learn to connect with their feelings in the moment and they express them in service of connecting with others. Remember, this type is prone to choosing aloneness, even isolation a lot of the time. Yeah. So when they're able to connect with others, even if it's just in relation to an outcome, so I'm thinking in the workplace in this particular instance, that's when you can find them being more integrated because we have a lot to learn from the fives. Yeah, the fives are smart. subject matter Albert experts. Einstein. Fives. And so in health also, they share information about themselves readily versus kind of sitting idly by and letting others dominate. And they're aware of the importance of sharing in order to form stronger bonds and relationships with people. Right. So really for these people, what I'm hearing you say is that it's finding deeper relationships with people that they are in their lives. Like it's really all about the connection. That's what's missing. So if I'm in health, mm -hmm. then I'm making real connections. Yeah. And so, you know, in episode 32, we use the term, the value of emotions or the value mm. of connecting. Yes, yes. And that's a way to differentiate this type from others because they don't necessarily see the value right. in the connection and because, because they're, they're, they're in their, they're in their Some mind themselves. They're, yeah, they're in themselves, but they're really in their mind and their thoughts, what yeah, they know. The, yes. Very intellectual, very cerebral. Yeah. Uh, typically, this is where this type resides. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so interesting. What about type six? All right, our loyalist. 
Healthy six observe their fear and meet threats with confidence versus jumping into the worst case scenario. And they do this with faith and courage. Mm -hmm. Um, They find a way to balance their usual tendency of focusing on what might go wrong with an ability to articulate what might go right instead. They become more effective through their own power, but not always as as it just relates to what they think is best, but actually discerning facts and making (laughs) diplomatic decisions. Sounds like nines. Yes, yes. And And that's them in growth. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sixes go to nine Mm -hmm. in growth. Absolutely. Thanks for pointing that out. And then we talked about on our last episode how the loyalist has blind spot in jumping into the worst case scenario without taking a look at all of the data. Mm -hmm. Well, in health, data is critical in shaping the mindset of a type six in a position of health so that they are able to make the facts and make decisions toward positive actions and next steps. And I can just speak to being a seven in my six wing. I mean, I'm appreciative of the focus on facts relative to sixes, but I can get exhausted pretty quick when yeah. they're, when they're, when it's only the facts that show the danger Yeah. Versus giving me a few things that like are exciting about to. it. Yeah, look forward to. So it's 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 a nice offset because sevens definitely need discerners in their in their lives to be they healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of us do. Something that we didn't talk about in the last episode, or I hadn't planned to point this out about this, but the loyalist, you've mentioned the word faith a yes. couple of times. Mm-hmm. And if we think about faith, I don't know that they mean it from a religious standpoint. I think what what we're what you're saying here is kind of that leap of faith because you take a leap of faith and there is no cushion. There is not necessarily yeah. an, an, a, a parachute. Right. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. And so they have a real hard time without knowing for sure yes. that I'm safe. So w- when you're thinking about this in terms of faith, mm-hmm. when you're saying living in integration, they have a lot more faith in people. Yes. They have a lot more faith in themselves. They have a lot more faith in the good Mm-hmm. that is around them and yes. the, the happiness that can potentially ensue from a run in the rain mm-hmm. or a slip down a hill versus, Oh, right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to break my leg, you know, all those things. So I just yes. wanted to point that out because that word has come up a couple times. Yeah, no, good, good stuff. All right. Moving on to type seven, us, the enthusiast. So healthy sevens realize it's limiting to only see the positive. So they learn to balance the positivity with an ability to take in the negative data. Mm. So the literal opposite of type six. Absolutely. Which is interesting. If you look at the dynamic in relationships between sixes and sevens, how there could be a conflict, but then how also there can be extreme complementary, yeah, you know, so supportiveness yeah. to each other when both are in awareness and when both are integrated. So sevens learn how to slow down and welcome their reality or what is actually happening without needing to distract themselves. And this shows up as valuing the uncomfortable feelings as a way to experience more depth. I certainly know about this firsthand. Okay, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, do you find that feeling negative emotions puts you in a place that helps you navigate difficulties better? Yeah. I mean, it's something I've had to learn. Like I, I've learned this through coaching. I've, I've certainly learned it through the study that we've done and, and, and most certainly through therapy is I, I am, I can feel the negative emotion, but I haven't always been very good at naming it. Right. You know, I'm, and I mean, with the episode, I forget the number, but the episode where we talk about Atlas of the Heart, Brene Brown's book, you know, there's 87 different emotions right. that we tap into, but it was, a massive amount of the population that she's, you know, that she's surveyed over the years, we can name three emotions. Right. And that is debilitating because if language is, you know, truly the thing that we need, you know, there's a lot of what we talk about on this podcast is why we're doing this podcast is to create comfort and validation at times and sometimes discomfort around realities relative to leadership inside the office and, and without. I haven't always been... I haven't always possessed the ability to name the negative emotions because most of the time I'm just running the hell away from it. Right. And so in this, again, in this chapter of my life, I'm learning to not only sit with it, yeah, but to understand it. And so I'm on a quest of a deeper understanding of my emotions and how it relates to my physical and mental well-being. Right. And so, yeah, this is, you know, something that is, you know, I, I'm aware of it, 
Yeah. But that doesn't mean I do, still don't have a lot have of work it. to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I want to throw out a pro tip that I just thought about, too, that um, we talk about my friend Summer a lot. Mm-hmm. But she recently, uh, she's raising a teenage daughter as well, and who the daughter is a three. Oh, okay. And so, like me, I'm a nine. I go to three in growth. We mm-hmm. have a hard time tapping into emotions. We just talked about that. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear me use the word anger a lot because that's the only one I know. <laughs> Angry or happy. <laughs> Pretty right, much, right? right? <laughs> yes, yes. And I would say this girl is probably similar to me. I've mm-hmm. always said to someone, she's just like your Aunt Meg, like literally. Mm-hmm. Um, she has, because of this truth, mm-hmm. Summer has found a, I mean, I'm sure you can Google it and find a sheet of emotions. I mean, maybe Brene has one out there where it identifies all 70, uh, 87 emotions. Mm-hmm. But if she's going through something and she's unable to articulate that if the the teen- teenager is going through something and unable to articulate it. Summer has that ready, mm-hmm. that printout. Oh yeah. And they will sit down and she'll say, I'm going to leave you here, mm-hmm. you know, 10, however long you need mm-hmm. 15 minutes, whatever. I'm going to go do this thing and I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about the emotions that you're able to identify. And she does it. Yes. And so I tried that okay. recently with, with my son, Cooper. Who's 15. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which it's so funny. He doesn't have any trouble tapping into the emotions, but I learned that really quick. He's an eight mm-hmm. on the Enneagram. And so mm-hmm. he's like circling all these emotions, like I'm pissed. I'm, you know, all these things. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just saying that is a tip for people. We, you have talked a lot about mm-hmm. our inability as people and different Enneagram types to really name that emotion. Yep. If you need help with that, there are tools out there. You just have to be conscious enough to go print something off mm-hmm. and force yourself to go through the exercise. Yeah, I think that that's, I, I hadn't heard that. I had, you hadn't shared that uh-uh, with me. So I thank haven't. you for that. And and I can't wait to talk to Summer about it as well. Mm-hmm. But, and I'll make sure that, we'll make sure that these are in the show notes. But it's, this is something I learned in, in professional coaching. And so when I went through this series, it was, a, I don't know, it was a four month uh, professional coaching with other, there were five of us in this, no, there were six of us in this group. And we were led by you know, and uh, again, a professional coach to talk us through all kinds of things that we were going through. And one of, we would start off every session with looking at the emotion. It's called the emotional will. So that's okay. what we'll put a link in. I think sometimes it's called the feelings will. Okay. And she'd put that thing up there and she's like, what do you, f-? and I would literally stare at it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And was, in fact, she was at the concert with us that we could continue to talk about. And she brought that up and she was like, poking fun at me because now I'm in therapy dealing with my emotions. And she's like, you would just stare at it and you'd be like, mm, I don't know. I'm not feeling anything in, in except in the, <laughs> that one, that one lane, section. that one section Which that's of Cooper happiness. Yeah. Uh, everything else, I'm not feeling any of that stuff right now. And so yeah, it's, it's interesting good. that you would bring that up because um, that was just something relative, uh, you know, relatable is because she reminded me of how I would just stare at that thing and didn't, and see, <laughs> didn't see a thing. I know. And it's like one of those simple tools. Like when you go to the doctor's office, what's your level yeah, of pain? pain. <laughs> Pick the smiley face or the angry face. Like how bad is it, man? <laughs> so it's kind of the same way, but like with kids, with a husband, with mm-hmm. a team member. Yes. I mean. It's so helpful. It's so helpful and it's so simple. So I just wanted to throw that out there for those of us that have a hard time tapping into that particular emotion. It's a great tool. I don't know if Brene has a, a specific visual for the 87, hey, but the book is worth it. It, it may be out there and we just don't know it, yeah. but we'll take a look and see if we can find something okay. and we'll put it in the show notes. All right. Our last, uh, not last, definitely not least, least yeah. uh, but type eight are challengers. So healthy eights can balance their power with an awareness of their vulnerability. And they realize that real strengths mean the ability to share weaknesses with others. And they moderate their impact by being more mindful and expressing s- softer feelings and lessening their impatience to take immediate action instead build more meaningful connections. Yeah, I'm not going to use any names here, but... I, we, we've mentioned that we have eights in our midst and I am raising one. I find that they want to move on. Yeah. Like enough, mm-hmm. like let's move on. Let's just put that behind us and just move on. You're saying generically speaking about the eights all across speaking, the board. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like buck up. Yeah. And like let's pull, move on. Pull up your, like my mom has this sign, which makes sense because she's a two. And so when she goes into stress, she has this big sign on her wall that says, pull up your big girl panties and move on. Right. 
just just for clarification, for those who are still learning the Enneagram, twos go to eight, eight and stress. And stress. Yeah. So that's her. <laughs> I'm stressed. Pull up your big girl panties and but, let's go. Yes. That is what I see. Mm. I see that, you know, and I want to be like, well, can we hang back? Can we just hang back? a minute in this thing Mm -hmm. that we just skipped right over. And I have a tendency to do that too, which is what we talked about in the last episode. You're just coming from a different point of view. They're, they're over it and ready to move move on on because they want to get things done. That's right. And you want to not deal with it because you don't want to face it. Or I don't want to deal with the emotion, the emotion of it. (laughs) And I don't want to deal with any of it. So I know. (laughs) Like, I just want to play. Yeah, I just want to have a great time and make everybody happy. And they just want to kind of like the three, they just kind of want to check that box and move on in in a very strong way. So, you know what? People need type eights. Yeah. The world needs a lot of type eights. We need, we need (laughs) all the types. That's what makes us special. And, um, but definitely, especially in the workplace, eights bring a, a, a rare, um, quality to a group. I mean, we've, we've certainly benefited from, from having a solid set of eights on our team. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like we talked about before, sometimes they don't even realize they don't realize the, the the negative we talked about in the last or the blind spots. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the last blind spots. Yeah. Yeah. Blind spots. Well, I think they would, you know, say that's not yummy to feel, but then on the other side, they don't even see the good either. Like my son has said, strengths either. He said like, mom, I, I think I said this in the last episode. I can't read a room. Like mm-hmm. I'm horrible at it. Yeah. So, um, read the room in a, I'm, I'm going out of bounds way or read the room and, Oh, I'm entertaining people way. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, there's no aware. There's it's a lack of awareness around that, which is why we're talking about this. Right. So now that we've had that, that wraps up all the Enneagram types. Mm-hmm. And now that we've had two full episodes focusing on the blind spot specifically, Really, if I'm putting this and if you're making this a recommendation for people who are listening, what do you recommend people do next? I mean, I, I, I think the smartest thing to do relative to this particular information is to share your blind spots with people. I think so. And, you know, and, and that can be people that have taken the Enneagram or not. But if you really deeply care about living in a more aware state, you're sharing your, your, your known blind spots and, and, and not just the blind spots themselves, but how you want to show up knowing this mm-hmm. about yourself and with the people that you trust, that you work with, that you live with, that you're friends with, letting them know so that they can help tap you on the shoulder when you might be stepping away from where you want to be and celebrating you are when you're in that moment. Mm-hmm. So that's... That's what this journey is about. It's not just sharing this information so that people can point out when you're stumbling, but it's also to celebrate when you're in that moment of, of integration. And so I would say, like I said, I think you should share this information with those in your life that you trust to help you navigate these. And hopefully they will reciprocate, reciprocate by taking the test and caring about their, 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 where they stand as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I would hope that for you. Um, and then just really trying to live in, in, in the awareness and giving yourself grace. I mean, you know, that's something that, that I think in, to some degree, all numbers have their own struggle with Mm self-compassion as does everyone in society, but relative to the Enneagram, we just approach it differently And so, you know, being able to be self aware is, is oftentimes an uncomfortable state of awareness, but knowing it and accepting it is half the journey Mm -hmm. towards being in a comfortable state of how things are. And I want to be real careful that as we elevate these blind spots and as we elevate, you know, the less glamorous side of the Enneagram type numbers that I want to make sure to put in, you know, a disclaimer that we should not use this as an excuse, mm-hmm. you know, and I, 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 I want to say that because I, I've been guilty of that mm. is that, Oh, I'm just a seven. So I just get to continue to ignore my negative emotions, for instance, because I know we've talked about on that on both episodes. No, that's not the person I want to be. 
I want to be a person who understands that that's a potential blind spot and I want to do something about it. And so because of the significant changes in my life, I found myself in a position to, you know, want to ignore these things. And that wasn't serving me well. And it wasn't serving those that I'm in relationships well at all. And so, which triggered the need for really a deeper dive into my emotions. So again, let's not use this as a crutch Mm -hmm. or an excuse. Well, I'm Oh, I'm a nine, so yeah. I, don't, I don't have to confront people if I don't want to or whatever no. it is. And, and again, no. I'm, I'm kind of making general generalizations now, but that's just what I would say is let's let's lean into it and own it Yes. so that it doesn't control us. That's right. it, it, it puts us in a position of power. And then by all means, if there are people in your life that haven't taken the damn test, that's the best $12 you could ever spend. So um, please give it as a gift. So that's what I would also recommend. What a great birthday gift to give to somebody who's starting a new revolution around the sun and the year of their lives to give them the Enneagram test to learn something about themselves. 12 bucks. And if you have a little bit more money to spend, I would also recommend giving them a book. One of my favorites right now that I've, I, I didn't re- study the first time around when I was really focused on leadership and motherhood, but that I'm really enjoying right now is um, The Road. I think it's called, it's by Ian Crom and it's called The Road Back to You. Okay. And so we'll put a link in the show notes there. So if you have a little bit more of a, than a $12 the budget. Is that we were reading yesterday? Yes. Man, that thing is good. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a, it's written by another author too, Susan, but I can't remember her last name. But I know that it's those, got all the highlights. Yeah, in the notes. it's <laughs> she makes fun of my Highlighters. highlighting and my She's tabs. Like, Hold on, let me highlight. Hold on, oh. let me put a tab. Yes, I'm, I have a very specific way it. of learning. And usually, what you highlight is pretty good. So, <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> so, all of what you just said is is so helpful and mm-hmm. and really. If I'm offering advice to leaders based on these two episodes, awareness of the blind spots, Mm -hmm. what life could be like on the bright side. Yep. And then if I'm looking at and I'm identifying with my type, I'm thinking, am I living my life this way with this episode? Mm -hmm. Am I living my life with these feelings and this, in this, the way that they have just described my type? Am I living that way? If you are, congratulations. Congratulations. Keep going. And but if, if you're, you're not, not, welcome to the club. That's right. <laughs> welcome to the club. And let's just keep working on this together. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's transition to our music moment. Okay, didn't we start there? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I mean, listen, I'll talk music really, all day long, yeah, but I, I feel like we kicked off over, there. <laughs> I'm overdoing it on the music. I can't help myself. Okay, no, good I point. Love it. I all right, love it. so then we'll end today's mm-hmm. episode. Thank you yes. all for coming back and hearing Part two, I know it was a lot, but certainly we're all better for it after listening and learning. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but it's, man, most In things worth, most things worth it. Are. Are. Yeah, like Jimmy Choo's or Louis Vuitton's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Worth it. Yeah. Okay. okay, until next week, you all, thank you so much for listening. Please remember all of this content, especially in our show notes. Um, we'll have information available to you on our self smarter podcast website, and then also feel free to leave ratings. It helps us. Thank you so much for those yes. of you that already have, we're, we appreciate you. And until next week, we send you into the week with grateful hearts. Goodbye everyone. As always, you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at self smarter podcasts. You can also leave a rating or review if you enjoyed what you heard today. Not only does this mean so much to us, but it also helps other leaders and future leaders find our community. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in becoming self smarter. This podcast is produced by Snacks Media and music is from a free platform. Well, that is until Brandy Carlisle reaches out to us to write the original score for our podcast. Friends, have a great rest of your day.